About 2.2 billion people in the world lack access to safe portable water at household level. More than one third of the world's population lacks basic hand washing facilities at home. The water crisis is hitting the world at a time when hand washing with soap under running water is hailed as one of the most effective methods underpinning COVID-19 prevention protocol. The city of Harare, located within Harare Metropolitan Province, is facing a perennial water crisis emanating from a wide range of causes, chief amongst them being climate change, financial resource constraints, poor catchment management and general lack of proper social accountability. Harare Water, a department of the city of Harare, which supplies water to residents within Harare Metropolitan Province, is currently producing 250 megalitres per day against a daily demand of 1,200 megalitres. During our tours in the city, we visited catchment areas around Mabvuku, which feed dams where water is obstructed and treated before being distributed to residents. We also visited Budiriro 3, one of the suburbs hard hit by waterborne diseases, and Epworth, a peri-urban environment majority of vulnerable members of our society. Budiriro 3 is a high-density suburb in the southwestern parts of Harare, which has a population of about 40,000 families. It is characterized by dilapidated infrastructure and poor water, sanitation and hygiene facilities and higher ground requiring enough water pressure for potable water to be accessed at the tap. The suburb was one of the epicenters during a typhoid outbreak which caused 55 deaths and 10,000 reported cases in 2018. The health nightmare largely emanated from water shortages and also consumption of polluted water, a reality the community would not want to relive. Public water points have turned out to be the main access points for potable water. What we are doing here is uh, trying to ensure that as a short-term short gap measure, we give citizens access points uh, from the public to access water. Why? Because uh, right now we are in Arari. Uh, for everyone to get water at the tap, they, want one th they require 1,200 megalitres per day, but the local authority is producing 250 megalitres. And of that 250 megalitres, 40% is lost through leakages. So this area, uh, which is Kuduro 3, uh, is on a high note, uh, so because of gradient, people don't, uh, do not access water at the table. So we have uh, partnering with Oxfam, uh, this is the option that we have given to citizens to access water. Uh, there is a committee uh, that is responsible for you know, uh, ensuring that people have access to water. They open two hours, uh, they are volunteers, they are community volunteers. Uh, who are trained, we train them uh, on uh, 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 infrastructure management and community stewardship on this infrastructure. So the committee is responsible for you know, distribution of water uh, to residents. This public water point serves on a daily basis 300 households per day. So allocation, they open two times. Uh, this tank, uh, in terms of storage capacity, is a 10,000 uh, litre tank. So when it fills up in the morning, they, uh, you know, save the first 150 people, right? And then during the, from three, that's right now, to the other, then they save the rest, the other 150 per day. So on a daily basis, uh, 20,000 liters are produced and saved to, to the community. The other role of uh, the uh, committee here, remember we have got COVID-19 prevention protocols, is to ensure that when people come here, they have masks, they practice social distance, uh, they wash their hands regularly under running water. We do have a facility there. The challenges that we are facing, first is that uh, to ask people to have social distance one meter, it is a challenge, a very huge challenge. That's the challenge that we are facing. And even hand washing, uh, people do not have a, a culture of hand washing in our nation. So it's something that uh, we face in terms of uh, uh, challenges. And the water also is not adequate. 10,000 liters is not enough for 150 people. So there is need to ensure that there is also another additional tank to deal with that uh, Communities may make a contribution uh, which is meant to do with the uh, purchase of uh, water treatment people that is found in that uh, small blue um, uh, you know, uh, box there. And uh, 
which is also meant to also cushion the security people who look after the infrastructure during the night. They do have a constitution. We developed a model constitution that is used by all public water points in Arari and has been adopted by different actors. Also included MSF and other international development partners. So that model constitution uh, is uh, used to govern the operations of the committee. At the end of the year, uh, the community is given an option to elect a new committee that you know has to operate on a yearly basis. So they have an annual general meeting where that process actually happens. So what we are with this is a, a model of self-governance by a community determined to achieve the right to water. There is a partnership of different stakeholders. So the residents are able to have agency. They are able to regulate each other's behavior in terms of their access to water. This is a model that is to be replicated across the setups. Epworth is a peri-urban settlement situated some 12 kilometers southeast of Arare's central business district, a place once dubbed the Pool of Death, after claiming the lives of countless people through drowning, is fast turning into a puddle of life. While the former quarry open cast mine exudes an aura of death after consuming thousands. This place is called Epworth Quarry Dam. Uh, you once been uh, called a uh, Pool of Death. And now it's now a pool of, uh, of life because now people are now using this quarry dam, which used to be a quarry which was once been owned during the Rhodesian era by the British family uh, as a, a mining, an open cast mine. So after the depletion of the quarry, which was used to build the most parts of the city roads, uh, this place uh, was uh, left abandoned. There was no gap feeling or whatever by the people who have been extracting uh, the, 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 the quarry here near Perth. Uh, resulting that some water have to, uh, have to uh, fill in, uh, rainwater, etc. So this place used to, to be a, a very dangerous place, uh, but today people are now taking advantage of the difficult situation which they are facing about water every day here in Zimbabwe. Uh, because uh, all wetlands in Epworth have been destroyed. Uh, uh, people building houses on the wetlands, resulting that uh, for most bowls to dry up. Uh, then uh, people have no alternative source of water. They are not drinking water from this area for domestic use. As, as the place, as you can see it, it's used to be heavy. Where we are standing right now on the ground, there used to be water uh, all over the place. But because of the uh, for water. Now we live with uh, the, the water table is going down. So this is a part of uh, airport which they usually call the quarry table. Its water is currently helping to quench the thirst of many locals in the midst of the area's dire water shortages. Nowadays, residents of all ages and backgrounds can be seen teeming with a sense of relief at the water source in what clearly depicts their reliance on the dam. Community of Ebon is facing a dire water problem. Uh, as Eda, we've been trying to engage with developing partners to see how, how, how we can make the lives of our people uh, easier in terms of our water sources, safe water sources. Uh, just outside this quarry is a river which runs uh, for almost, uh, what we say, almost two, two kilometers or so. But beyond that river, there are a lot of houses that have been built on a, on a water lane. So this has actually, in a way, depreciated our, our water table. So everyone is now depending on this part which is only left. Because previously, the water we used to occupy this whole vast lane. So we've been engaging with uh, organizations like the Dan Church Aid, and uh, a few other organizations that have been forthcoming and probably we were working for the best so that our people can get access to clean and safe water. Mabvuku is a high-density suburb some 17 kilometers east of the city center where the abundant wetland service provides recharge of nearby streams feeding into Lake Chivero. 
free purification of raw water, carbon sequestration services and biodiversity habitat. I'm a, a resident of Mabuku suburb, a suburb which has gone for more than uh, three decades or more than 30 years without taped water from the local authority, city of Harare. Where I'm standing here is the Cleveland uh, Dam catchment uh, wetland area. Uh, based on the uh, uh, scarcity of water in the suburb of Mabuku, as residents of Mabuku, through the Combined Harare Residents Association, we managed to create a community-based organization by the name Cleveland Action Alliance. Uh, our main uh, thrust on uh, the formation of this uh, community-based organization is the preservation of wetlands and ecosystems for their biodiversity. In this uh, area, you can see we have some balancing rocks, among other uh, natural features. Some birds, uh, different species are around the place. This area is also part of the Ramsar sites, because the Ramsar is a convention which was uh, set in Iran to protect, to, to, um, then to advocate for the preservation of wetlands. So in 2018, residents of Mabuku res re registered a community-based organization known as uh, Cleveland Action Alliance, which is to protect this area and other sensitive, ecologically sensitive areas or wetlands in the area. Since uh, the city of Harare, which is the local authority, is failing to provide us with potable water, uh, it is also in caring for the res de residential areas where it's supplying potable water, it is in caring more than two 2.3 million United States dollars per month to purify water. So uh, we are worried because this bill is channeled towards the already suffering resident. We are all aware of the biting economic challenges in the country. So most of uh, the residents in this area are unemployed. We cannot afford to sustain the high bill. And also we should bear in mind that the city of Harare, according to the constitution of this country, section 77, there is a provision that, as residents, we are supposed to be provided with the clean and potable water. It's failing to do that. So it's uh, willy-nilly trying to sort of uh, uh, violate our constitutional rights. So as residents of Mavuku, we are fighting uh, in conjunction with other residents. I, can, I think you can see that there are some beds which are already invading the place to show that this is a wetland. These are wetland ecospecies. So what we are looking at is a situation whereby these wetlands remain intact. We also work in partnership with uh, stakeholders, including Combined Harare Residents Association and other uh, community-based organizations in suburbs like Tafara, in Kwazana, in Rugare. Despite its recurrent tap water shortages that have seen some go for over two decades without a drop, Mavuku's wetlands are a source of raw water, a jewel where one can find an array of flora and fauna, including peculiar migratory birds that breed there from places as far as the Oceania. As appetite for housing rises in the city due to a growing population, there have been threats of urban development on the ecologically sensitive space, comprising river recharge, especially during dry season. It has taken consistent lobby efforts from volunteers and community stewards for close to a decade now to prevent the Mernays and in some instances initiating demolition of illegal structures on the site, all to help preserve the natural infrastructure of water. Uh, this place uh, resembles uh, uh, one of the uh, wetlands which uh, is in, in Harare. But more importantly, um, this place is managed by communities um, using the concept of community stewardship. So the community manages this, this place uh, to other uh, threatening activities to the wetland. Um, like behind my, 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 my back there, there was an invasion uh, of people who wanted to put some houses. But through the community's intervention, uh, through the CBO which was created by the citizens, they managed uh, to remove, through lobbying and advocates, to remove uh, such a housing project. And also furthermore to that, there was also another invasion which was conducted by the former Deputy Minister of Finance uh, who also invaded the other side. Of, 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 of the catchment and the community again acted uh, with the pace uh, to be able to uh, uh, protect this, this place. Uh, this place uh, is a best, uh, I would say it's a case study of community-based 
management of uh, wetlands. Yes. Our communities, like the, the CBOs, have been working closely with the district office in educating, number one, the people not to practice urban agriculture and other activities in this, in this place, but also making reports of um, sand mining, illegal sand mining. For your information, just about uh, 100 meters from this place, uh, people behind the you know, old Mapugu there, people are being arrested because of the reports which come from these people for, 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 for illegal sand mining. But also you realize that some, there are some other things which are militating against that, which is corruption. But through these communities, they also make reports. <laughs> you know, when they see like any threatening activity, they make reports to the authorities concerned, both the city of Harare, the district office, and the police, if it, if it requires the police, and even the environmental management agents. They work closely with the environmental management agents to make sure that these places are not depleted. And this is a snippet of the issues in Harare that the residents' associations advocate for.